I've been studying like conspiracy theories for like probably ever since I've been in high school. Like I'm not like a deeply invested person, but one thing I've learned from like being interested in is that people usually like they really stigmatize them and stuff like that, which is fine, it's understandable. And they get stigmatized because of things like this <laughs> monster and Bigfoot and stuff like that, things that probably aren't as truth worthy. But the Mandela effect is a little bit more interesting than most um, conspiracy theories and you really shouldn't even think of it as a conspiracy theory. It's more of a false memory. Okay. According to an article in Very Well in 2014, a false memory is a fabricated or distorted recollection of an event. So that could be something as simple as you forget to put your keys in your pocket but you think that you did or it can range to something more serious as you forget this, like the crime that you witnessed and you give wrong, like you give the wrong details. So what is the Mandela effect? The Mandela effect is just a collection of like shared false memories. It's a pseudoscientific belief, meaning that there's actually no real like scientific, like there's no science behind it other than it's a bunch of false memories, and that's really only the science behind it. It got its name from the former South African president, who many people thought like they have a distinct memory of him dying in prison in the 80s when he actually died December 5th, 2013, in a very luxurious state. So these are some of the, this is, couple of the common occurrences in the Mandela effect. First is Rich Uncle Pennybags, who is like the Monopoly man. And people usually remember him having like this monocle when in actual reality he doesn't actually have it. Another one is the Bernstein Bears. Um, as a child, I always remembered the Bernie Sand Bears having an E right here when it actually is an A. Okay, this one is a famous quote from a movie that most everybody knows. It's the Luke, I am your father one. And it's actually, that's actually the incorrect line. The correct line is no, I am your father. People, you, 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 I am your father. So, uh, it's a thing that a lot of people think that it's actually said. And what's even more interesting is James Earl Jones, who is the voice actor for Star Wars, like for Darth Vader, Darth Vader, and he's also the voice of Mufasa from The Lion King. He remembers saying, um, Luke, I am your father, in an interview in 2004. Congratulate you. If you only knew the power of the dark side. When I first saw the dialogue that said, Luke, I am your father, I said to myself, he is my I wonder how they're going And so that's just a really interesting for him to like, I guess, it's just unknown why it's like that. Then is Mirror Mirror on the Wall. It's from um, the seven, like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I remember this as like always being Mirror Mirror on the Wall, but it's Magic Mirror on the Wall who is the first one of all, which honestly does not sound correct to me at all, but I've, I've looked it up and it's, it's definitely that. <laughs> and I, it just sounds wrong to me, it doesn't sound correct at all, so. And then 
model, which hurts me in the field, really, is the We Are the Champions. Everybody, like, knows that at the end, at the very end of some songs, there's no time for losers, because we are the champions, and then it's of the world. But sadly, there's no of the world. It just, just ends with no closure at all. It's a little bit more, I guess, credible 